Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, brewing beer in your digestive tract. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 22,000 courses. I've mentioned previously how much I've used Skillshare. There's lots and lots of video making stuff on there, but they also have everything from productivity habits to mixing music. The first 500 people to click the link in the description below will get two months free trial. And now let's get on with today's video. Imagine that your wife begins to think that you're a closet alcoholic, so she purchases you a breathalyzer to test your blood alcohol content or BAC throughout the day. Your doctors concur with her assessment, thinking you're sneaking off into dark corners to imbibe without the judging eyes of the world to condemn you. The only problem is that you haven't been drinking at all. All of the begging and pleading in the world just won't convince anyone, though, because after all, you're constantly drunk. Well, that's exactly what happens to a 61-year-old man from Texas. After going to a local emergency room to complain of dizziness, he was told that he was drunk. His BAC was 0.37, nearly five times the legal limit to drive. The mystery lay in the fact that this man hadn't been drinking. So how exactly do you get drunk without drinking or otherwise putting any alcohol into your body. Well, this is where gastroenterologist Dr. Justin McCarthy from Lubbock, Texas, stepped in and tried to figure out the curious case of the drunk man who drank no alcohol. What they found was that this man had experienced a set of circumstances that allowed alcohol to be fermented within his own stomach and intestines. Yes, indeed, it is true, you can brew alcohol in your own stomach. Endogenous ethanol production, or auto-brewery syndrome, was first described in medicine in 1972 in Japan. Very few cases are ever reported, presumably because the syndrome requires an unusual set of circumstances to cause noticeable symptoms. In all of the known cases, some type of yeast ferments the sugars coming from carbohydrates or any sugary foods into ethanol. Should enough ethanol be produced, well, you get drunk. Brewer's yeast is found in many different types of foods like breads, wine, and beer. It's also sold as a nutritional supplement due to its high levels of selenium, protein, and B-complex vitamins. Unlike other other types of baking yeasts, it's high in chromium, an essential mineral that helps with maintaining our blood sugar levels. So why is it that such a common food additive ingested by people all over the world only creates auto-brewery syndrome in a small number of people? Well, the truth is that the phenomenon of different types of yeast producing ethanol in our digestive tracts is actually very common. One study of people suspected of having auto-brewery syndrome showed that 61% of people had an increase in their blood alcohol level when given oral glucose. Another study done in the United Arab Emirates showed that while this alcohol production was common, the production was too low to have any forensic significance. Basically, people don't complain because the amount of alcohol produced didn't give them any symptoms. However, that same study did note that the average blood alcohol level of the participants was approximately 0.034%, almost half the legal limit to drive in most states in America. That said, auto-brewery syndrome leading to problems such as the man from Texas had is rare enough that there haven't been many studies performed that can isolate who is most at risk of contracting the problem, unless, of course, you think getting drunk on bread and candy isn't a problem at all. One documented case involved a girl who had a short bowel. When contents from her shortened bowel began to grow certain types of yeast, those yeasts fermented any carbohydrates that the girl consumed, and she would become intoxicated. Japan has the highest number of cases reported. So why do Japanese have this problem more than others? Well, it all comes down to enzymes. About 50% of Japanese people have a mutated gene that leaves the liver unable to properly filter alcohol. The result leads to them being unable to quickly get rid of the alcohol in their system, which in turn means they remain drunk longer. So, essentially, smaller amounts of alcohol produced over time build up to make them drunk, while others' bodies might simply be able to filter out the alcohol quick enough that no noticeable symptoms occur. Much more specifically, many Japanese people lack an enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase or ALDH. This enzyme would normally convert a byproduct of ethanol being produced by the liver, acetaldehyde, into a harmless acetate. Due to the fact that they have no ALDH, when they consume alcohol or their bodies produce natural ethanol, it leaves them with a buildup of acetaldehyde in their system. That excess causes numerous unwanted symptoms and can produce more ethanol, thereby giving them a higher BAC than they would normally have. 
As you can see, the circumstances around all known cases are somewhat different, and no known definitive test exists that can confirm the diagnosis. Instead, doctors need to figure out each unique situation based on the person's medical history. In all cases, the underlying mechanism of the syndrome is an overgrowth of yeast in the digestive tract that ferments carbohydrates into ethanol. The curious case of the 61-year-old in question is no exception. Well, his story began in 2004 when he broke his foot. After a surgery to repair it, he was given antibiotics to control the infection. Directly after that, he became excessively drunk after only two beers and would even sometimes get drunk after not having drunk at all. What was curious about this case is that the gentleman in question would not become drunk for sometimes up to 24 hours after the ingestion of carbohydrates. After several frustrating years, he presented himself to Dr. McCarthy in 2010 and his problem was revealed. The antibiotics killed off some of the bacteria in his digestive tract. The resulting loss allowed growth of a brewer's yeast to take hold in his gut. And from that point on, drunken sandwiches were on the menu. His treatment was the same as most people who have this disorder. He was given antifungal medication to kill the yeast, followed by a course of a type of bacteria that would recolonize his digestive tract with the appropriate amount of gas-producing microbes. In the end, it is possible to brew beer in your stomach. If you want to start avoiding all those liquor taxes, just take a high dose of antibiotics to kill your gut bacteria, eat a bunch of brewer's yeast, and take your date to Olive Garden and eat all the salad and breadsticks you want because you're not paying for the drinks. Who said there weren't legal ways to avoid paying taxes? But I feel the need to remind you that you really shouldn't actually do this here because proper gut health is actually pretty imperative to your overall health and those friendly microbes living down there well, they're a huge part of that. And with that in mind, I'd thoroughly recommend either buying or brewing your own beer, just not doing it in your own stomach. And if that's your thing, you'll probably like the course about flavor emulation in beer that's on Skillshare, unless you like the flavor of human insides. This course is put together by famous brewmaster Garrett Oliver, but it's just one example of what Skillshare has to offer with its 22,000 online courses. Just as a demonstration of the depth here, Skillshare also has a great course on how to design a label for your beer, as well as what to pair that beer with at dinner. Yes, it really is that deep. Now, a lot of online learning platforms, they charge you by the course, which can get really pretty pricey after a while if you're really into learning. Premium membership with Skillshare, though, lets you dive into any course that you want and start improving your skills and do more of what you love doing. No buying individual courses just to watch one part of it, and no limits on what you can watch and learn. So you can get your beer flavor right, make a great label, and then pair it correctly, all for that one monthly price. Really, the best way to see what Skillshare has on offer is to try it for yourself, and you can do that for free for two months through the link in the description below. That's for the first 500 people who click on it. And that also helps support this show, so that's also a plus two. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring the video, and thank you for watching.